Afade, good morning. Afade, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, hearing will begin in approximately 32 seconds. As long as uh, the audio is ready to rock and roll, uh, I would like to request that everyone please ensure that your cell phones are in silent mode or in a vibrate mode, and we will proceed momentarily. Good morning and half a day, ladies and gentlemen. This confirmation hearing, sponsored by the Committee on Guam U.S. Military Buildup, Infrastructure and Transportation, is hereby convened. On the agenda, we have the appointment of Ms. Catherine C. Scroll, Member, Board of Directors, AB Wampat International Airport Authority for a term length of three years. We also have the appointment of D.D. S. Camacho, Member, Board of Directors, AB Wampat International Airport Authority for a term similar length of three years. For the information of the public and the community, the initial notification for this confirmation hearing was sent out to our stakeholders and to our media partners on the 1st of June, uh, with the second notice being disseminated on the 6th of June. With that in mind, we do have several individuals that have signed up. Uh, I, what I would like to do to the nominees is I would like to invite both of you up to the table rather than just individually entertaining your nomination. I would like to invite both of you to the table. So if you can join us up front. And if I can also invite the following individuals. I know uh, Mr. Ricardo Duenas is submitting a written testimony. Uh, Chuck Ada, Mr. Ada, if you would like to join us up front. Mr. Bautista, are you going to provide testimony? Okay, so you signed in. Okay, so we will begin with uh, Ms. Kathy Scroll, if you can just identify yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony on your nomination to once again continue your service at the Interna Wampan International Airport Authority. And good morning, Chairman Uggen and members of the Guam Transportation Committee. Thank you for this opportunity to come before your committee and the legislature to express my continued commitment to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of the AB Wanpat International Airport Authority of Guam. I have served on the airport board since 2015 and I am appreciative of the immense responsibility to ensure policy is in place to ensure the efficient, safe, and profitable operations of Guam's only commercial airport and lifeline of our economy. During my tenure, I have seen extraordinary development and expansion in operations, facilities, and services. The challenges of keeping up with international standards and enhancing Guam's reputation as a regional player and balancing those factors with what is good for Guam and the community is my highest interest in continuing to serve the people of Guam in this capacity. Currently, I serve as the Vice Chairperson of the Board of Directors and Chairperson of the Board Subcommittee on Air Service Development. This subcommittee sets policies on the development of marketing programs aimed at acquiring new businesses, investment, and services to the airport. Within this committee, two key incentives to attract air services were developed and adopted by the board. The incentives include a 10% reduction on all operational rates and charges for existing Japan routes and a 50% rebate on operational rates for all new routes out of Japan. This resulted in three carriers, JAL, T-Way, and soon to come Jeju Air, who started service from Japan and to regain much needed capacity after the pullout of Delta and the suspension and reduction of Japan routes operated by United Airlines. The committee also pushed forward in board initiatives to enhance passenger services, specifically 
passenger processing times, and now with board approval, we've invested in automatic passport control kiosks and entered into an agreement with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which allows the airport to request for added officers for inspection services during peak periods. This has significantly decreased passenger processing times with the longest wait that was over 90 minutes before the implementation of these programs to now less than 40 minutes, not subjected to secondary inspection. In a study commission during my tenure, the airport's contribution to the economy was measured to be at $2.3 billion annually. Inarguably, this is Guam, Guam's airport is a key component in the economic engine that drives our island. Mr. Speaker, I would be honored, Mr. Chairman, I would be honored and privileged to continue the momentum which my fellow directors and I have committed to as policymakers for this key agency and resource of the island of Guam. I am very proud of the hard work and commitment from the staff and management of the Guam International Airport Authority, which has been publicly recognized. Guam's Office of the Public Auditor has commended GIAA on a clean audit for three consecutive years. For two consecutive years, the FAA has awarded the Guam International Airport Authority a 100% <clears throat> perfect score for their inspection of federal operations compliance and is the only airport in the Pacific region to hit this mark. Our airport management holds board positions in prestigious international organizations, including the Airports Council International and PATA. We've established sister relationships with Sendai Airport in Miyagi Prefecture, Japan, and Clark Airport in the Philippines. And we are establishing relations with Korea Airports Corporation that oversees four airports in Korea Shenzhen Airport in Pearl River Delta area in China. We will use our sister airport relations to forge joint airport marketing to airlines to connect us with direct flights and are employing target, targeted air service efforts to add new service or increase frequency to Guam. On a personal level, I've attended two Routes Asia conferences and connected with more than 20 airline carriers to share our Guam story. GIAA was awarded the Routes Asia Marketing Award in 2017 for outstanding air service development program as a result of acquiring two new carriers in 2016. In closing, I wholeheartedly support the Hulu vision of the Guam International Airport, the only direction is up. I again offer my humble service to the Airport Authority and the people of Guam and look forward to any dialogue regarding my reappointment to the board. Sizu Usma'asi, and thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Kuo, for your testimony this morning. Ms. Camacho. Half a day, Chairman, again, and members of the Transportation Committee. I am thankful for the privilege to appear before this committee to express my continued desire and commitment to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of the AB Wampat International Airport Authority. I have served on the airport board since March 2015 and have had the distinct honor of serving as a policymaker of an entity with such a huge impact on our economy and role in regional and international aviation, and most importantly, Guam's globalization. My particular interest lies in the finance and insurance industries that I have been involved in for over 25 years that are key to protecting Guam's largest asset valued at over 650 million. During my tenure, I have served on the board's finance subcommittee that develops policy considering the expense of airport business and capturing revenues and controlling cost. 
The most important role of the board is in approving a responsible annual budget and ensuring that operational needs are met efficiently, safely, and securely for the residents of Guam and visitors to our island. During my tenure on the board, the Office of the Public Auditor commended GIAA for achieving a low-risk audit for three years in a row. Just this past fiscal year, we've increased our net position by $2.5 million, up from $7.1 million in fiscal year 2016 to $9.6 million in 2017. The number of employments has also increased by 4.7% to $1.85 million, passengers in fiscal year 2017 versus 1.77 million passengers in 2016. It is important to have oversight of the liabilities and risk that are present in managing the traffic that comes and goes daily in Guam's only commercial airport. With such an immense operation that includes people, equipment, and infrastructure, I believe my background in risk assessment provides value to the board. I would like to take this opportunity and thank this transportation committee for their time and ask for your favorable support of my reappointment to the AB Wampat International Airport Authority Board. It is a distinct honor and privilege to serve the people, and I am committed to further serve in this capacity. Sincerely, Didi Camacho. This is Marcy, Mrs. Camacho. And before I proceed with the uh, testimony of others in the panel, I'd like to thank the Vice Speaker. Thank you very much, Vice Speaker Talai, for joining us this morning. Chairman Duenas. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning and half a day, um, Senator Uggen, Vice Speaker Turlahi. Um, I'm here today, this morning, uh, to provide, I provide a written testimony and also I have some oral testimony. I'll keep it short because I know you are all very busy uh, these days. But I come in support of uh, the renomination or the uh, reconfirmation of uh, Ms. Kathy Scro and Ms. Didi Camacho. Uh, to serve as members of the board for the Guam International Airport. Personally, I've, I have known both these women for many years, although in my past experience, I've never had the opportunity to work with them on a professional level. Uh, however, over the last two years, I have had the honor and pleasure of working with them on the board. And I, from, a per, from a personal perspective, I'd like to say that I've been very impressed uh, with their performance as board members for the airport. Uh, they are both very engaged in all the business of the airport and all the matters that come before the board. Um, they do not pretend to know everything about the airport, but they have always strived to learn more and to ask questions, important and pertinent questions, uh, on all the matters that come before the board, uh, which is something that I think is admirable and incumbent for all board members. They're cognizant of the issues that are facing uh, the airport today, and many of the issues are very critical and crucial uh, for the movement of the airport moving forward to the future. We have a lot of projects that, are, that have been undertaken uh, over the last few years, not to say the least, which is their, the construction of the third floor corridor, which is the it's probably the second largest construction project that the airport has undertaken since its inception. They've been very crucial in the committees that they serve in. Um, Ms. Gro serves on our marketing committee and has been instrumental in attending uh, a number of uh, meetings, both on and off island, to meet with potential airlines, uh, to put a face to the uh, airport's image and she's done a very good job in that sense. Uh, I have served with Didi also on the fin our, our finance committee within the airport, and she brings a depth of knowledge and experience which has been very helpful and important uh, to the work as we move forward uh, navigating the financial landscape uh, for the airport's different projects. So needless to say that uh, they're both very important members of our board. They've brought a lot of experience and expertise and skill sets that uh, are crucial to ha the board members. And uh, I wholly support uh, their um, confirmation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Duenas. Mr. Adda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. And good morning, Vice Speaker. Um, I have written testimony as well yeah. uh, that outlines the capabilities and accolades and achievements that both uh, Vice Chairman Seguro and Director Camacho has brought to the board, but like the chairman, I, I feel the need to go off script 
Um, again, you have my written testimony uh, because it, it does not speak to uh, what I feel is very extremely important, and um, I, I kind of wanted to express that to you personally this morning. And that that is, you know, um, uh, like the chairman has mentioned, the past three years they, we have been blessed with their leadership and um, um, the skill sets and capabilities they bring to the table to to serve and to govern, you know, the board. And, um, and in my time, I, I'm, I'm extremely blessed to have them as, as far as guidance, support, and the leadership. And uh, it's amazing to see, and, and, and it speaks for itself, you know, some of the, or some of the achievements that, you know, uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, the success that we have, the synergy that's there with uh, the board, uh, with management, and more importantly, the employees. Uh, we couldn't get to where we're at without the employees. They're the, they're the ones that make us. And, and again, it's amazing to see the love that employees have for for the leadership and and vice versa the leadership with the employees um, there, there's never there's never an engagement that we that we have at the airport with the board that they're inquiring about the employees and um, that wasn't the case when I first got to the airport um, um, but now I see with the transformation and the current board that we have it's 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 been nothing but fabulous and um, I'm, I'm in here uh, in full support and 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 you know I Humbly request, you know, the support for the reconfirmation of both Vice Speaker or Vice Chairman Segro and Director Camacho. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ada, and thank you for your testimony, uh, folks. First of all, just a couple of uh, highlights, and I thank you for uh, further highlighting some of the accomplishments over the course of the last few years because it's a total team effort, and I think uh, Mr. Ada highlighted uh, or mentioned something that is very critical in this entire process of appointing board members and commission members. And that is the direct participation and support for activities at, the, at their assigned uh, responsibility. And I think in this case, I've attended just a few that I've been invited to uh, events at the airport, and I've seen both of you at those events. And that's really reflective, actually, all three of you, Mr. Chairman, but your nomination is not up. But it, it really is reflective of the support that the board members provide to not only setting policies from that perspective, but most importantly, integrating yourself and understanding what your team members are going through. And when I see team members, the entire airport uh, personnel. So I just want to commend and, and thank you very much for that. I know that there's a couple of highlights that, that uh, I think deserves uh, some additional mention because it was a team effort on the part of the entire airport. And that is uh, GIA on a clean audit for three consecutive years. That's certainly a, a, a wonderful accomplishment. And then two consecutive years from the Federal Aviation Authority awarding GIA a with a 100% perfect score for their inspection of federal operations compliance. And I, we don't need to highlight it's the only airport in the region that has accomplished that. But, you know, 100% rating is, is already uh, a tremendous accomplishment on your part. So kudos to the board members, kudos to your admin, Kudos to the entire team at the airport authority for what you have done. Um, the third floor renovation, I mean, we're talking, we're not going into an oversight, but I think that that's, that's certain, certainly a project that uh, took a little while to get off the ground in terms of actually starting the construction after you were able to acquire the, the financing. But it's good to see that, in fact, uh, that's proceeding. And hopefully someday within, or if not by the end of the year, I don't know what your timeline is now, whether it's been modified or what. But hopefully by the end of the year that uh, we'll be able to see that completed and then the inconvenience posed to some of our passengers and some of our vendors would be relieved. Um, other than that, uh, it really, to me, when I look at appointments, I, I like to see where the level of support is provided to the entire team and the entire operation. And, and I already highlighted that a little earlier in terms of the support that you continue to provide the airport team. So from that perspective, I thank you very much for accepting the reappointment and wanting to continue to serve our island and our community, and I look forward to your service. Okay. Madam Vice Speaker. Thank you. Good morning to all of you, and, and thank you, Ms. Calvo and um, Mrs. Camacho, for your service, your continued service, and um, your willingness to do another three years. And... Um, I just wanted to put on the record, if I may ask, uh, if any of you has a, a business of your own or your family that does business with the airport. 
that might pose a conflict. Mrs. Camacho. The family business? Yes. Uh, none that I know. Yes. Well, I... Uh... Oh, please turn on the microphone. I do, my... I am not directly involved, but Calvo's Insurance has uh, has put out uh, a bid um, with the airport. Uh, in those instances, I have recused myself. I am not a member of the board or an officer of Calvo's Insurance, All right. but um, All right. well, thank you. I yeah. have to uh, recuse myself in those okay. instances. Okay, good. I just want to put that on the record. I think the public should know those things. And um, uh, I want to commend you, yes, for, the, for your focus on um, the processing of passengers, the convenience to all the people of Guam while they process through the airport. And I, I'm looking forward to that, that construction and uh, how it's going to help us, I think, right? It's supposed to make it more efficient for um, TSA and everyone to, to get people through faster. And, and so I thank you for that. I think in prior hearings, we had discussed and with the, uh, the chairman, Mr. Duenas, about um, there's just a few things that I'm, I'm hoping that the board will continue to look at. And, and these are, of course, there were procurement issues brought up in the recent court case. And though I hope that the airport you know, reviews procurement policy, although it's taking a position uh, on one side of this case, I hope that it just continues to review policy. And I know that some of these decisions happened before your term, but review the procurement policy so that we, you know, we can assure the people of Guam that there is um, fair competition always, right? That's the goal of our procurement uh, laws. The other, the other two issues, and these are minor in, in perhaps in comparison to the overall operations of the airport, but I think big for the people of Guam. And one is customs, right? So we just had customs in here the other day and they continue to be charged by the airport for use of space, but um, I just think it's becoming even ever more critical that their ability to, you know, stop drugs is um, is enhanced and not in any way deterred. And um, so I want to ask you, while you are here, to please do everything in your power to to cut the cost for the customs. And um, it, otherwise, we're looking at increasing passenger fees to, you know allow them to pay more rent at the airport. And in their recent budget hearings, it shows that the rent at, their rent at the airport has been increased. And they were not able to explain why. And, uh, but so I'm just, I just want to ask you if your board could please reconsider that and consider, in fact, finding a way to, to cut costs altogether for customs. Because it seems it's, you know, I know your explanation is, uh, you know, the bond requires that all the facilities you know, be, I, I think there's, it's undeniable that this is an um, enhancement for the airport and, and necessary. And I don't think the people of Guam would agree to operating an airport if, if not for customs being there and, and being able to take care of us in terms of, you know, particularly at this time, drugs being imported into Guam. So I, I'm just going to ask you to please look at that again. And also, and also the parking, and uh, we brought this up. And you know, all of these assets at the airport began as, you know, they were Government of Guam assets dedicated to the airport and, and um, expanding our tourism industry and uh, of course our business capabilities here on Guam development. But uh, yes, I just, it, I just, want you to look again at uh, ways to cut costs for the people, just, you know, the regular people of Guam who use the airport, who want to see their family off, who want to greet their families when they come in and see if there's a way to, you know, cut the cost, maybe cut it out for the one hour, you know, and anything over an hour. But if you could please just look at that again. I know I've asked the, the chairman and if I could ask both of you to please just Take a look at that. I think those are, I mean, and of course, what, you, what you're already working on, the TSA processing times, all, the, all of those um, efficiencies of getting through the airport, uh, we appreciate those. But if you could also look at those other two things, I think um, 
we really do need to come to an agreement regarding customs that's going to benefit all of us. And um, I hope the airport can look at it like that. And so I'm just going to ask you to, to push that if you can. If, um, I also want to find out, uh, so the, the terms are staggered and they're three-year terms. So it looks like, um, are there any other vacancies, Mr. Duenas, on this board? I know that right currently we're, we're at uh, full capacity on the board. Yeah. All right. Will there be any expirations in um, 2019? No, I don't believe so. I think uh, currently the composition of the board, um, a majority of our board members have gone through their reconfirm or their reappointments and reconfirmations over the past year. So I don't believe that there will be any um, uh, any board members coming up for for renewal in 2019. All right. So you have a very experienced board. And yeah. okay. Well, and I want to thank you again for all your work and congratulate you on the accomplishments of the airport. Of course, everyone knows the airport is uh, is vital to what we do here on Guam and uh, vital to our economy, vital to our lives. Um, so thank you for that. But yes, if you could please just take a look at these these items that I've mentioned, because I, I think um, I, I'm just asking you to do everything that you can as board members. It's something that you know we may not be able as senators to get involved in, but uh, as board members, I think you have absolute um, capacity to do that, to to address those issues and to make them work better for the people of Guam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Vice Speaker. I guess uh, one final question that I, I have, or two, par two particular points. You know, when uh, I'm sure a number of you have traveled regularly to other destinations, other tourist destinations, and when you enter their, their airport facilities, the first flavor you get is the local culture. You recognize exactly where you're at. And, and the airport over the course of the last 15 years has transitioned to some extent where there's that presentation, but I think we still personally, I, I think we still need to put an additional emphasis from that perspective of ensuring that when people come to Guam that that's the first thing that's overwhelming in terms of either physical presentation, the facilities, uh, the artwork, like I said, there's been some good improvements, but other things that could highlight and remind people that they're here in this island paradise called Guam. So that's one aspect. The other component is uh, I know that there was extensive effort provided with trying to increase the number of visitors or capacity from Japan because of our declining numbers. Are you seeing any, and the seat capacities you just highlighted, Ms. Grohl, that there's a couple of areas here that uh, certainly has resulted in some airlines considering either increasing their sea capacities to Guam or actually making Guam part of their destination. Um, well, first of all, I, seen, I'm sorry. Yes, good, good. I totally concur with you about uh, enhancing our island culture and uh, being able to have brand identity when it comes to being this is Guam as soon as you enter. And I assure you, I share the same passion and uh, the marketing com um, department at the airport is working uh, with the renovation. There are plans on the way, and I will definitely ensure that we share that, that message. Um, with regard to capacity, the incentives have definitely uh, provided a good return on our investment. Uh, we continue to meet with various airlines in, um, in marketing and selling the airport uh, to other carriers. And I believe we have two or three that have uh, s signed on. And there's Skymark is working. We're, we're in negotiations with them currently. Want to speak to that, Chuck? Uh, well, like the, the vice chair mentioned earlier with regards to the cultural emphasis, the third floor project is going to, is like she mentioned, going to take us underway with the 1% for the arts that's required. Right. So with that huge, you know, construction piece, we're going to see a significant um, um, infusion of funding specifically for marketing our culture. So we're very excited about that. 
Um, with regards to the additional airlines, there is uh, discussions with several airlines. As a matter of fact, we'll be meeting with one in the end of July. Uh, to, and we've been actually courting the, uh, these particular airlines for the past two years. Um, they're seeing the light of day, like uh, mentioned by the ch uh, vice chairman, with the incentives that we have provided. Uh, they have become extremely attractive. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to uh, secure those two airlines with um, uh, an addition to uh, Philippine Airlines, who we just had discussions with the last uh, week. They're looking to increase three additional flights. And we're trying to, um, we're hoping that um, on one of those segments, it's a uh, uh, Manila, Japan, Guam route. Um, so again, uh, hopefully we, you know, um, that would come to fruition so we can see an additional increase with regards to that ja the dip in the Japanese market that we've seen. So yes, we're, we're slowly building back towards that base. And um, um, I think in huge part is because of the incentives that the board has created and has provided us as a tool to attract these airlines and, and increase, well, attract one and increase you know, the existing. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Adder. Thank you again, uh, Ms. Crow and Ms. Camacho. Thank you very much for accepting the nomination. We wish you the best on your continued service to our island and to our people, and in this case, to Team Airport. Um, the committee will continue to accept any written testimony on the nomination of Ms. Crow and Ms. Camacho until Friday, the 15th of June, and then we will close out the committee report and present it to the legislative body. So thank you very much again, folks. Have a good day.